Wine is not just made from grapes. It is created from culture, history, passion, and a sense of beauty. The beauty of wine can be appreciated through different perspectives of wine, from discovering the most beautiful chateau and contemporary architectures of Bordeaux, to the legendary Burgundian wine in Kima. We'll participate in the annual marathon of Medoc, which combines wine and sports. Visit the first Hong Kong purchaser in France's premier winemaking region, and get to know the only Chinese master of sommelier. Welcome back to In Vino Veritas Season 4. Let's explore the vibrant world of wine with our different senses. Bonjour, I am Alex, and I was born in France. Ready and start our journey from the past to the future. If you are looking for wonderful architecture in Bordeaux, you will never want to miss Saint-Emilion, which is the medieval village located in the heart of the famous Bordeaux wine area, where 2,000 years of history between men and wines are preserved. In 1999, for the first time in the world, the vineyard was written on the World Heritage List by UNESCO as a cultural landscape. That is to say, it is a historical landscape that has remained intact, but which is still carrying on its activity. Limestone was mined here between the 9th and the 19th century, in order to standardize the whole architectural look of not only the city of Saint-Emilion, but also a few others in the region. The steep streets, Les Tertres, connecting the upper and lower parts of the town, are a rich part of the history of Saint-Emilion. These cobblestones have traveled a long way, originating all the way from England. The English ruled the area from 1152 and for three centuries, traded freely along the Dordogne. They used small cobblestones to ballast their boats on their journey to France and along the Gironde into the Dordogne River. Once they arrived in Aquitaine, the stones were discarded and replaced by wine barrels for the return journey. These stones were then used to create cobbled tertre of Saint-Emilion. The wineries in this area are as well full of history. This fairy tale castle dates back from the 15th century and has been owned by the same family for the last 600 years.
Well, I'm the 25th generation, so it's a long, uh, long history. Uh, it's a bit heavy because I have a lot of family pressure. You can succeed in passing to, from generation to generation when you only give the property to one kid. If you give to two kids, then they have kids, and then everybody has shareholds, and after it's difficult to pass it from generation to generation. My uh, great-great-grandmother was teaching catechism, so Catholic uh, lessons to the kids of the village. And the German arrived and they wanted to live here because it's a nice place to live. And she told the German, okay, you can come, but uh, the kids that I am teaching cat catechism have mumps. Mumps is the disease that the kids uh, have. It's very bad disease for men because if you catch this disease, you become sterile. So you cannot have more kids. So all the Germans got afraid and they left. And of course it was not true. But the idea uh, of telling that story was quite, uh, quite intelligent, so they never lived here. This family-owned property counts 100 hectares in total, compromising their own church, meadow, forest and vines. But it was not a chateau at first. Now this chateau uh, was built at the end of the 19th century. Before that, uh, there was a 15th century, I would say, fortress house. And uh, my ancestor destroyed it in 1860. Well, they built this chateau. 10 years after it burnt, and they rebuilt again. And uh, the architect is called Blackier. Uh, he's a famous uh, Bordeaux architect. But the problem is that the chateau was built so 140 years ago now. And uh, when it was built, there was no bathroom. There was no central heating. Yeah. So it was good at the, at the time. So my parents created bathroom everywhere. And uh, the only heating system we had is uh, chimneys, fireplaces. So in the chateau, we have uh, 39. And we have uh, 40 hectares of wood around the property to put in the, in the fair places to, to hit the house. And you have to keep the tradition in the property. For example, in this room, you cannot, well, you could, but you cannot paint in pink, for example, uh, because it would change the, the soul of the, of the house. And if you go walk in the woods, you will see some wood houses by my kids and they organize fighting. And so it's a very nice place to live. One part of the, the forest is forbidden for hunting and the other side um, is for hunting. So I go uh, every weekend during the hunting period uh, for hunting and we hunt uh, deers, boars, fox, uh, rabbits. We only produce quality wines because the land here is very good. The terroir is very good. It's the same than the upper part of Saint-Emilion. So it's limestone and clay. And you can produce um, fruity, elegant uh, wine with body, with structure. Part of the production is aged in oak. And we export, I would say, 90 to 95% of the production, mainly in China, Europe and America. Well, it's a good feeling because you are proud of what your ancestor did and it's difficult as a matter of pressure because you have big pressure on your shoulder to, to give it to your kids. So every generation is trying to 
make it better than it was before. So I'm increasing the quality of the wine while I'm trying. Although proud of its prestigious past, Bordeaux has never been old school because it is now filled with contemporary wineries. Forget about the traditional images of wine yards and historical chateaux because the wine world is now competing with new amazing new design in winery buildings. Some of the biggest names in architecture have added a Bordeaux vineyard to their portfolios as Philips.
which is a famous building, a very event building, and people are coming because of the image of the building. And we want to have the same thing in Bordeaux, and uh, it's a success about this. L'idée du musée vient du site, euh, parce qu'ici on est au bord d'une rivière et à cet endroit-là la rivière tourne. Et euh, on est aussi à la limite entre la ville et le port et la rivière. Et donc euh, il fallait un objet rond. Et aussi ça vient du vin. Je suis travaillant ici avec mon mari, j'ai ma famille ici. Donc nous passons tout notre temps ici. Donc nous pensons que ils sont concentrés, opulents et frais à la même temps. And by being like that, it creates a big interest, I think, on that wine. It's, um, it's a wine that um, is really nice with food, that match food perfectly. And uh, this is really what I think is important for wine, should go with food. I think we have more space to work, we work more comfortably, so um, I see evolution, but it's not only the building, it's also the work outside. You know, uh, wine, it takes two years to have um, the, the final product and it's it's a constant um, question mark for us and, and, and trying to do better year after year. So the building was um, inside that evolution a big part but not probably the main part. It's um, the work we've done outside in the vineyard plus the building and then it, it arrived to today's um, uh, wines of Chateau Bardot that are much more elegant, I think, than what we were doing in the past. But we still have a, a long way and a lot of things still to build. Uh, all chateaux were had two arrows. Uh, the two, these two arrows were quite narrow, and the idea was to to uh, have um, uh, optimize, optimized. Uh,
chauffer le bâtiment. Donc on a un verre très performant. Et à la fois, animer une curiosité. C'est-à-dire, on voit à travers, mais sans voir. Quelque part, c'est un verre un peu miroir. Donc, il renvoie l'image du vignoble autour, qui est très beau. À la fois, on voit quand même à travers, donc on est curieux d'aller voir ce qui se passe à l'intérieur. Et ensuite, on pourrait se dire, il doit faire très chaud à l'intérieur. Eh bien non, parce qu'on a un verre très performant, qui empêche effectivement à ce qu'il y ait un, des températures euh, trop importantes à l'intérieur. Et la structure qui tient le bloc, euh, le monolithe euh, en aluminium, est une structure qui est faite pour qu'elle disparaisse derrière le verre. On ne la lit pas. Et donc on a vraiment l'impression que le bloc il est posé sur les queues. Et ça, c'est ce que souhaitait Jean-Michel Villemotte. Et c'est ce que Laurent Brunier et, et toute l'équipe euh, avons traduit de son architecture, euh, donc on en est très fiers parce que euh, quelque part la réussite est, est, est vraiment pleine, quoi. la réussite est complète. We don't have uh, any pressure exerted on the wine during all the process. Um, after that, uh, the uh, other fact is uh, plot by plot winemaking. We have a lot of different vats there, and uh, we have a, a very big diversity of terroir, diversity of terroir uh, in, uh, in Pedesclo. We have 19 different soils and uh, more than 200 plots. So we have to, to be very precise on the uh, work all, all uh, along the year and uh, on the uh, date of.